What if I told you that in 2007, famous Hollywood actor Nicolas Cage was in a bidding war with another Hollywood actor, Leonardo DiCaprio, for a dinosaur skull that turned out to have been illegally smuggled into the States? You really can't make this shit up. Ah, Nicolas Cage, he's the actor that's hard to hate. Even in his shittiest movies, he manages to make it infinitely better with his charm, good looks, and stellar acting. I couldn't think of a more horrible job if I wanted to. I guess I was pretty horny. Well, as it turns out, this actor's life is almost as crazy as the roles in the several movies he's been in. How so, you're probably wondering. Well, for starters, Cage has a bit of a buying problem. Just a bit, I don't think it's anything for cause of alarm. I mean, the only things he's purchased in the past are things like a burial tomb, extremely rare comic books, shrunken pygmy heads, a deserted island in the Bahamas, a couple of European castles, an octopus, and of course, the focal point of this video, a $276,000 dinosaur skull. So yeah, he may have a bit of a buying problem. I don't really know. So obviously, with someone as high profile as Nicolas Cage, it's hard for him to really hide his expenditures from the public, especially when he's going out of his way to buy full-on islands and castles. My point here is, Cage's spending habits are notorious to the general public, not just because of how expensive they are, but also due to how weird they are. And because he's considered to be one of the highest paid actors of all time and always gets roles in several different works and projects, you'd think him being able to buy all of this stuff would be no problem, right? Well, apparently that's not the case, because back in 2009, he had become broke due to his everlasting state of buying a bunch of pointless shit for no other reason I could think of other than it just looks cool to him or something. I don't really know. He ended up blaming his financial manager for this and would even go as far as suing him for fraud and negligence. I know nothing about this situation, so I have no idea how much of a role his financial manager played in Cage going broke, and I refuse to look up anything on the matter because I don't care. Right now we have to focus on one of the weird things Cage decided to buy with his fortune, a 70 million year old Tarbosaurus Batar skull. Which may seem like a funny story, but depending on who you ask, this could be seen as a more controversial matter. Because in rich movie actors being able to have the freedom of purchasing something that could be useful in helping us understand our world before man, it takes away from those who could use that specimen to study it for that very reason. We'll get to this later though, for now let's get a little more context on the story here. So back in 2007, the I.M. Chait Gallery rented out a showroom in New York to hold a themed luxury auction. That year's auction had been natural history themed and held all sorts of weird items like animal skulls, a gold nugget, an Egyptian mummy's hand, and of course the most notable prize, the Tarbosaurus skull. An anonymous buyer would make an appearance and would eventually win the skull after a bidding war with another potential buyer. The skull would go all the way up to $276,000, indicating that it had been a success amongst the crowd. After the auction, this anonymous buyer would take home his prize, but little did this person know they would only be able to keep their prize for about 8 years. Because in 2014, this person would be contacted by the Department of Homeland Security to tell him that it was possible the skull had been stolen and he had to return it. This person would eventually be revealed to be Nicolas Cage, confirmed by his publicist who said that they had received a call from Homeland Security stating that the fossil that they had purchased almost 8 years prior in the auction in New York was possibly stolen. Eventually, it would be concluded that the fossil was in fact illegally taken from Mongolia and smuggled into the US to be sold off for a great sum of easy money. According to a New York Times article on the matter, Cage had received the fossil in 2007, after he was told by the person that was selling the skull at the auction, who claimed to be a collector from Florida, that he had gotten the fossil from a Japanese collector who had been holding the skull in storage. And the skull itself had apparently been embedded in rock and was kept in a box since the 1960s to keep it protected. But as you could probably already tell, this wasn't exactly the case. Eventually, around 2014, the US Attorney of Manhattan, specifically the office of Preet Barrera, would file a a civil forfeiture complaint against Cage. Keep in mind, this file was not to accuse Cage of being the one that stole the fossil. It was simply so that the fossil can be repossessed and taken back to its rightful place. According to several sources, Cage had voluntarily returned the skull to avoid giving anyone a hard time. Neither Cage or the gallery that was holding the fossil for auction were accused of any wrongdoings, so neither of them faced any real consequences. Well, except for one thing. This is what Cage said during an interview back in 2015 after he had returned the fossil to the proper authorities. The dinosaur skull was an unfortunate thing because I did spend $276,000 on that. I bought it at a legitimate auction and found out it was abducted from Mongolia illegally and then I had to give it back. 
Of course, it should be awarded to its country of origin, but who knew? Plus, I never got my money back, so that stank. Damn, imagine having to pay a great sum of money for something you really like only for it to be taken away from you and not even getting reimbursed for it. And I hate to be that guy, but as much as this sucks for Cage, there's a few lessons he could learn from this here. Anyways, now this just leaves one question. Who was behind the stolen Tarbosaurus skull? It had already been concluded that neither Cage nor the gallery had any fault in the matter, so now it was just left to the Florida collector that had sold the fossil to Cage through the auction. According to several sources, a lot of fingers were pointed at a man named Eric Percopi to be the collector. Percopi was a commercial paleontologist who's become known for stealing fossilized dinosaur remains from Mongolia. Apparently, for several years prior to the Nicolas Cage situation, the office of Preet from the US Attorney of Manhattan had been working hard to return stolen artifacts and fossils from Mongolia that had been stolen. And a lot of the dinosaur fossils that were found to be illegally exported into the states were traced back to Percopi. Percopi would eventually get into legal trouble for doing this that has nothing to do with the Nicolas Cage situation. In 2012, Percopi had imported an entire Tarbosaurus skeleton from Mongolia to Great Britain and then imported it from Great Britain to New York, where he was able to sell it for over a million dollars. At the time, he claimed that the fossil had originated from Great Britain, which isn't possible because it's declared in the Constitution of Mongolia that all fossils are considered to be culturally significant, therefore making it illegal to take them out of the country. And when they found out about the situation, the government of Mongolia managed to stop the payment of the skeleton from happening, had the skeleton examined, and concluded that it was from Mongolia. And as if that wasn't bad enough for Prokopi, several other pieces of fossil remains, along with two more whole Tarbosaurus skeletons, were trace back to him. As a result, Prokopi was arrested on the count of smuggling and attempting to sell something he stole. Not to mention the fact that he made several false statements as he tried to deny certain aspects of the story. In the end though, he took a plea bargain that made it so he had to return the skeletons to Mongolia and serve a three-month sentence in prison. The skeletons would be returned in 2013 and the whole ordeal would earn its own name, United States vs. One Tyrannosaurus Batar Skeleton. I don't see anything wrong with this title, let's move on. Despite the connection, some sources say that it's unknown whether or not Cage's dinosaur skull was a part of the collection that Prokopi had smuggled into the US. But other sources seem to almost or full on confirm that it was in fact Prokopi who had sold Cage the Tarbosaurus skull, with even one article providing a statement by the IM Chates director who was in charge of the natural history department during the time of the sale, who said, Nicholas Cage's specimen came from Prokopi. And it's been confirmed that the gallery had unknowingly previously sold fossils that had been smuggled by Percopi. But despite this, it doesn't seem like there was ever a definitive answer to this. If you were to ask me, there are simply way too many connections with this story that matches Percopi's track record, so I feel like he was responsible for the whole Nicolas Cage mess as well. But of course, those are just my thoughts based on what I've read. Despite what had happened, the aftermath of this situation is honestly really funny. This incident actually gave Cage a whole new interest that would lead him on the quest for the Holy Grail. This is not a joke, apparently he had become fascinated with mythology which would lead to his eventual interest in trying to find the Holy Grail. The search wouldn't take him too long though as it would take him to England where he would cap it off by asking himself, what is the Grail but Earth itself? How profound. As for Prokopi, it seems that he never truly believed that he did anything illegal regarding the events of 2012, since he defends this claim by saying that he never thought it would be illegal for a private collector to purchase or own fossils that come from Mongolia, which just shows how ignorant he is of the laws and regulations surrounding fossils of Mongolian origins. But after these events, he had a hard time getting back on his feet, but seems to have found a solid way of life away from the fossil smuggling business in Savannah, Georgia. I remember hearing about this whole Nicolas Cage story happening back when I was in high school and at first I thought it was funny. And don't get me wrong, after doing the research for it now and getting the whole story, I still think it's kind of funny. But there's just something about this that rubs me the wrong way and it's not just the fossil smuggling. Obviously, that's a very controversial and unaccepted thing when it comes to paleontology and really just any field of science. But what's also controversial within these fields is the idea that there are collectors and rich people out there that have way too much easy access to these discoveries that they want for nothing more than to just display and show off, without even considering what they could be depriving those who need these remains to study for the sake of understanding our past world. And as much as I like Nicolas Cage as an actor, any real natural history enthusiast would know not to buy these kinds of things for their own personal collection, because in doing that you are essentially interfering with another person's job. A job to study those things that can help them learn more about them since they are no longer around. 
And not only that, but in the case of Mongolian fossil remains specifically, it's just a massive disrespect to that country to take something of theirs that may not just contribute to science, but is something that is also considered culturally significant to them. And obviously this wasn't Nicolas Cage's fault, he had no idea where this dinosaur fossil really came from or how it got to the auction. But it's always good to be more mindful of that, as it seems like a reoccurring thing that happens in these sort of events. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you don't know, this was a result from a poll that I did on my community tab. And, uh, you know, a lot of you guys wanted a paleontology video. And uh, I know that this wasn't really a paleontology video, but, you know, there's there's some aspects in there that are important to paleontology. So I, I guess it still counts. Probably not, but I don't, I don't care. It was a funny story and I still enjoyed covering it. So anyways, I plan on doing another one of those polls because I actually really like doing it. So I'm just kind of shouting it out now because by the time this video is uploaded and by the time you're watching this part, it should already be live on the community tab. So go ahead and choose the next category of video that you guys want me to cover, whether it being a dinosaur movie or video game or whatever the hell I put on that poll. But yeah, again, thank you guys so much for watching and uh, yeah, have a nice day.